Hello everyone, Karnasa here and welcome back to Space Engineers. So, since the last episode, I obviously did the live stream, which I designed this rather funny looking contraption underneath me. It has now been completely finished. I think I am going to go, well no, I'm definitely going to go with the name Tiger Moth for this. Reason being, we've got these two appendages sticking out of the side. After I added these, it really screamed out moth to me and I've gone Tiger Moth because it is quite stripy. Anyway, as I was picking out the color for my leather seats in the interior, I was rudely interrupted by a drone strike. So if we come over here, we can see we have shot something down and it has left a rather large crater in the ground, not too far away from my base at all. And if I come over to the other side of the base as well, well, there's an even bigger hole. This has really messed up the landscape near my base. And that does prove that modular encounters are working. So I am going to have to be aware. And that does lead me to think, what do I want to do with the Tiger Moth? The Tiger Moth at the moment, well, it's pretty vulnerable. I am going to have to figure out a way of protecting that at some point soon. But before doing that, I do want to put this vehicle to use. So we are going to hop into that craft now and we are going to weld up the remainder of the base. This is certainly not the easiest of things to control and getting to the plates to weld them up has proven quite difficult. Hopefully it doesn't take me too much longer though. This is rather painful. I'm not sure if this vehicle was the best of ideas. Hopefully doing this side over here should be a little bit easier considering I don't have anything to get in my way. I do seem to be listing to the side a little bit though. So I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to remove those buttresses because I feel like it would be a lot easier if I welded those after I have welded the main structure. I mean, this one was pretty broken anyway due to the fact that that drone flew straight into it and has left a load of scrap metal all over the place. Ah, oh, drone, clean up after yourself. Meteor storm inbound. Oh dear, that is not a good Warning notification. I think I do have my Gatling gun set up to shoot down meteors. So let's pop out of this spacecraft and see if we can see where they're coming from. Everything is quiet. Everything is too quiet. Where are these foretold meteors? I mean, there's a big old spaceship above me. Don't see any meteors though. Well, I've been waiting here a couple of minutes and there is no sign of any meteor shower whatsoever. So I think I'm just gonna get back to welding the base. Seems like that was a bit of a false alarm. I bet as soon as I start welding, well, wouldn't that just be my luck to get hit smack bang directly by a meteor? There really isn't an awful lot of the base left to do now. We've got this little section over here, but then I think maybe over on the other side, I think I have been slacking. Well, there we go. That seems to be this side all done. I haven't done the buttresses yet. They will come shortly. I mean, we've got those two down here to do. Let's quickly just patch these up. There we go, that's all done. Now let's turn around to the other side because I believe there is quite a lot to do. This thing really does not like to fly well, especially when we are completely laden. We just hit the ground. I really hope I didn't break that thruster. I broke that thruster. Great, we're gonna have to go repair that. This ship is really rather fragile, hopefully. We shouldn't break this again. And I really do hope that was the only thruster that did get damaged by that <laughs> little bit of a wonky maneuver that I did just perform. Is everything else looking good? No, everything else looks to be perfect. Huh, these thrusters just really, <laughs> really are rather fragile. Well, nothing else seemed to be broken and we are able to take off again. This orbital mechanics mod really does change the way that spacecraft or even atmospheric craft move. It does make it rather difficult to fly in atmosphere. So I think I'm probably going to be a lot more reliant on rovers in this series rather than 
well, flying <laughs> spacecraft because this is really painful actually trying to move this around. So rather than me making you sit through that, watching me precariously move that spacecraft around, I have gone and I have finished this. And you can see that I have also applied a little bit of a paint job to it because originally it was very, very, very white. So I've gone for a white and blue color scheme. I feel like that kind of really amplifies, oh, I seem to have missed a section there, the fact that this is a very cold base. They are very cold colors, and I've tried to highlight all of the extensions in blue. Another thing that I have done, based on some of the recommendations from the stream, I have started to convert this section into a hanger. I have replaced the light armor blocks with these airtight hanger doors here, which I still have to build up. And then what I'm going to do with this space, I will attach some connectors so I can grab my rovers that are over in that direction and actually park them up inside. I want to have this section up here as my living quarters for the base. And an idea that I had was to have some kind of giant glass window over here, maybe extending out kind of in this kind of direction, which overlooks the hangar. I think that will be really cool means I can essentially wake up after a good night's rest, I can walk over to the window and I can check and make sure that my rovers haven't been stolen by some space ruffians. I really don't think that can happen in this game, but it's nice to imagine those kind of things. So I've been trying to think how I want to organize this room. And I think the first thing that I'm going to need to do is remove this conveyor tube because it is kind of in the way of this living section that I want. So because those conveyors weren't connected to anything, I had to go all the way up to this connector to actually remove this system. I did move the Tiger Moth before I did this though, so it wouldn't crash into anything. And now what I want to do is I want to replace that conveyor coming from this direction rather than from over here. And then that way I should be able to fully enclose this living space. I think what I'm going to do as well is place a conveyor junction here. That way, if I do want to move my conveyor tubes around again, which I think is highly unlikely, I won't have that issue where the conveyor tubes just fall because they're no longer attached to the grid. But there we go. That's that conveyor all welded up. And we now have our connector back up and running, hopefully. So I should be able to park the Tiger Moth back here again. Nice and gently does this any second now, and we should hopefully be able to connect. There we are, we are ready to dock. Just need to finish these tubes here, and then we should have our Tiger Moth connected successfully back up. There we go, it's gone green. That's awesome, and that should make making this room a little bit easier. So I think I'm roughly happy with how this section is turning out. We've got a flat window here, we've got some slopes going up, we've got some extended wall sections, which hopefully should give it a little bit of texture. I don't know really how this is going to turn out though. I guess the only way I'm going to have to find out is by actually welding it. So I'm going to do that now and see what it looks like. So I have started welding. However, I did want to get rid of all of the light armor blocks that I had up here because they don't look quite as nice as these sci-fi interior walls. So I have replaced the floor section up here with all of these interior walls. But one other thing that stumbled across my mind as I was doing this, I do want a way of being able to access this section here without going through the refinery. Reason being, you don't really want to be going through a factory situation to get to your living quarters. You want to be able to get to here without having to go through all of that messy area. So I think what I am going to do is I'm going to try and figure out a way of maybe placing some stairs in this corridor here. That way, once you come in from the outside, well, you can immediately access this upper section. I don't know how I'm going to go about doing that though, and I don't know really how it's going to fit. It might look a bit bizarre, but I think that's a risk I'm going to have to take. I think in order to get around the issue of this pipe sticking out, what I am going to do is I'm going to have a system of catwalks up the top here. That way, you will be able to look out of the windows down here, and you can see our lovely hanger down there with the bug, or <laughs> I've still not decided on a name. There were a few suggestions on the stream. I really need to stick to a suggestion. So yeah, we'll be able to look at the bug or whatever it's going to be called from there. But then we will also be able to stand on top of a catwalk over here and look down from this slanted window. And I think that'll be a rather cool view to look at it from. I also need to figure out what I'm going to do with the interior decorations of here because 
I feel like that is really going to transform this space. And if I'm going to be particularly honest, I'm not really an interior designer. So this is, well, it's certainly going to be interesting. Even though I only just said I don't think I'm going to be moving these tubes around. Well, I think in order to actually hide these a little bit more, it might be smarter to move this pipe in this direction and have this come up here. Oh dear, we're gonna have to tear these down again to get my grinder and <laughs> let's start doing this. And there we go with the tubes like this. And if we come back up here and place an interior plate here, well, or an interior sci-fi wall even, then the issue where I was having, <laughs> well, where I was having this pipe coming up here, that has been rectified. We no longer need to worry about that because it should all be tucked away in the walls, which is going to be really nice. Still doesn't solve my issue of stairs from downstairs though, so that, that sounded really bizarre. Stairs from down- oh, hello, another meteor storm as well. Let's go and have a look and see if we can actually see if this has any effect on us. Oh, that looks like it's coming straight for us. And our Gatling guns are firing. Oh, they are managing to do short work of those meteors. Very, very nice. And well, one managed to escape the wrath of our Gatling turrets and landed over there. I should probably go check that out because there might be some kind of rare mineral or resource that we can go and check out. Yeah, let's go and have a quick look and see if there's anything that we can see. Well, judging by the bluish color, I think this is magnesium again. And well, I don't really need magnesium. So I think I'm roughly getting there with the generic shape of this living quarters. I have taken safety into consideration, so we do have railings above these stairs here so that we don't accidentally slip down here. You can see we can walk in from the entrance and the stairs go up there. We've got two doorways here that I have left that we are going to be able to use to actually enter our hangar. And yeah, I think this is coming along. So this is the last interior wall piece for this section and it didn't actually take as long as I imagined. Only five trips. Only five trips. At least it wasn't far to go. I've got a cargo container just through there. Still need to do these catwalks. We still need to do the windows. We still need to do some kind of interior decoration in here, like beds and chairs and tables and stoves and yeah, just things to make it look like it's been lived in. Finally, with this steel, steel sliding door here being completed, that will be the main structure for this section of the base. Now, I'm going to take a step back and I'm going to have a look at this for the first time completed. I am in the hangar, but I want to see what this looks like from this side. Oh man, that looks mega. I'm really enjoying how that looks. That looks amazing. That looks way better than I thought it was going to. Okay. So now I've seen it from this side, I need to see it from the inside. So we come through these doors and we can see we've got this little corridor here. I am going to add another armory there just to kind of fill out the space a little bit. Let's go up the stairs. Okay. I mean, it needs lights in here and it needs some furniture, but this is looking pretty cool. I'm really enjoying this. I'm really, I really, really like how this turned out. And there we go. We can look into our hangar and we can check on the status of the rover that will never have a name. And we can make sure that it is still there safe. And then we will also have this hangar door built up. This looks awesome. I'm really <laughs> pleased that someone managed to convince me on the stream to do this idea. This looks amazing. So now that I have finished the structure of the living space, I have been turning my attention to what I'm going to do with this set of conveyor tubes. I don't think there's really any way that I can move those. I've had a fly around the base and observed it from all directions, and it does appear that it does have to remain there. What I have thought about is finding a way to hide that, and I have come up with potentially the idea of using these vertical window blocks coming straight down as like a pillar. It might look okay, it might look horrific. So I am gonna do that now, and I'm going to see how that looks. And I mean, these don't cost a lot, so if it does look hideous, can always tear it down. Oh man, it looks like we're having a bit of a blizzard outside. I did have to move this rover out of the way so I could finish this, or finish placing these blocks at least. Shouldn't take me too long now, I've only got four left to do. 
And then of course it is the joys of welding this entire structure up. Hopefully that shouldn't take me too long though. Well, these are the last six of these vertical windows that I do need to place before this section is done. Well, there we go. So let's have a quick look. It just seems to take up so much space. I'm really not sure how I feel about that with that there compared to how this looks. I think this looks way better. I'm really sorry about the storm at the moment. It actually makes it quite difficult to see anything. If anyone has any better suggestions, why don't you leave them in the comments? Because uh, this, this isn't really doing it for me, if I'm going to be honest. One thought that I have had, I might place something inside here just to make it look a little bit more busy just to make it look a little bit more interesting behind these vertical windows so i did also want to place these opposite the ones on the other side and i feel like if i place one here so if i grab my light armor slope and face it in this direction i feel like that's going to be really close to this thing this monstrosity I don't think that's going to look very good. And I think it's going to make the hangar look really, really cluttered. There's no way, absolutely no way that I can move that conveyor. Unless I get rid of the second Gatling turret on the roof. And I don't really want to do that. Because that is providing me a bit of protection. I'm going to place this anyway. So that this side is completed. And I can get more of an idea what this is going to look like. And that will pretty much be it for the interior of the hangar. Yeah, I'm really not sure about how close that is to this section. To be honest, now that I have welded up those supporting beams, well, they, they're not really supporting. They're not supporting anything. The game doesn't work like that. I'm kind of feeling this a bit more. However, we are going to need to keep the rover maybe here. Might fit a little bit better. It'd fit perfectly if it was in between the two. However, unfortunately, we can't build a connector to do that. Let me just move this and see what it looks like if we were one block over. I mean, it's not the worst thing, but it still just doesn't look quite as right. I think there will be more decoration in here. I may place some railings, some freight, and all of that kind of stuff to make the room look a little bit more interesting, and I will probably give it a bit of a paint job as well, but I feel like that is something that I will do in between the episodes, so I'm not going to do that now. I think the next job on my checklist that I do want to do is actually work on the hangar doors. They require... Quite a lot of materials, 250 steel plate for each one of these. I'm kind of tempted to get the Tiger Moth to help me do the top ones at least. I might do these ones by hand though. And actually, probably the best idea for that would be to build a connector in this room. Then that way, well, I don't have to run very far to get my materials. So... I'm going to quickly grab the components to do that, and then I will build a connector in this block here. And just like that, we have a connector in this room. Now, are these two going to be able to connect? That looks a lot higher than that connector, which is not looking very good. But I'll jump into this cockpit and see if we can somehow force this. So they don't connect like this. I wonder if I move the suspension of these wheels, will that do anything? So let's get to our wheels. They are on 100% at the moment. If we take those down. <laughs> oh no, that was a bit too much. Oh, that looks like we may have a connection. Yes, we do. Awesome. So we are able to connect if our suspension is all the way down. <laughs> so that works at least. And it's rather useful to know that. Right, I am going to move this out of the way though because I do need to access that connector so I can grab all of the parts that I need to build these hangar doors. That does look really bizarre with the suspension all the way down. <laughs> God, this thing has really taken a beating in the time that I've had it. Look at this. There's chunks broken everywhere. That's all torn apart. That bit's missing pieces. There were lights on here at once upon a time. One of the drills has been completely replaced because I went far too fast into an ice wall. Yeah, no, this has definitely seen better days. Poor little unnamed rover. I really should take better care of you. Anyway, <laughs> that's enough of a distraction. 
Let's start building up these hangar doors. Well, there's the first section all done. Looking rather nice. I am so glad I put this connector here. Otherwise, this would have taken a really, really long time. And it looks like I have run out of equipment. What am I missing? I think it said steel plate. Let's go to our production tab and let's make a whole load more of that. I do hope I don't have to go mining before I can finish this build. That would be really rather inconvenient. It's just... I kind of want to get this done. I really want to get this done. I think it will look really cool once it's all complete. No idea what I'm going to colour it in like yet, so that remains to be seen. How is our assembler getting on? Uh, it's churning it out quite quickly. I mean, we've got 128 already. Let's see if that's enough to finish another section of this build. Well, there's section number two all laid down. Awesome. Section number three has been completed. There goes section number four. And finally, we have section number five. Now, what I do want to do with this door is eventually set up a sensor system so that when it detects the rover, this should open. But for now, I think what I want to put in place is just a button panel or just a button even. So we can actually shut this up and see what it looks like. So if I just place a button terminal here, weld this up, and then we go into it and we set what this button terminal can do. There we go. If I get all of these airtight hanger doors and we name this bottom doors, I'll do this for all of them once they are completed. But I just want to see what this looks like for now. Now we come back to the button panel. We'll go for groups. And we should have bottom doors on here somewhere. There we go. Bottom doors. We'll put that on the toolbar. Then... With a little bit of luck, if we press this button, drum roll please, I'm going to get rid of the HUD for this. Here goes nothing. <gasps> and they close. Amazing. We've built a sliding door. <laughs> I mean, that's really not that impressive, but I mean, it looks pretty cool. It looks pretty cool. And we've now got a safe space to store our rover. I mean, we're missing the top, but I will get on with that now. I'm kind of really impressed with how this hangar has turned out. It's quite a nice space. I'm liking it. I'm loving it. I'm really liking it. I'm not sure if I should say I'm loving it in a video. I'm not sure if a certain company might get a little bit annoyed at that, but oh well. <laughs> let's, yeah, let's finish this hangar door. And there we go. Just like that, the top section has also been completed. I decided to do that by hand rather than getting that rather unmaneuverable aircraft out to try and get that section. Might have been quite difficult with the arch getting in the way. And I mean, the connector here did really help. It wasn't really that far to go. Let's connect this to our group though. Actually, first things first, I am going to close those before connecting that to the group. There we go. They are all shutting rather nicely now. Awesome. Um, that looks really cool. I really like how this is turning out. Now that I've done that, we are going to come back into the control panel and we are going to change that group and we'll come out. And if we look at this and once again, I'm going to get rid of the HUD for this and I'm going to get rid of my welder and we press this big shiny button. I wish it could be red. Everyone loves pressing a big red shiny button. And... Just like that, the hangar doors do open. Awesome. I mean, like I said before, this isn't really that of an impressive build. It's a built-in feature of Space Engineers. And I do have some ideas of a much cooler opening door. So with that hangar door finished, I feel like that is going to be a good time to end this episode. In the next episode, I want to start working on a second base that is going to be underground. And I want to dig a rather large hole in the ground to start that off. In order to do that, I feel like I am going to be designing some new kind of flying contraption. I know I said earlier on in this episode that I feel like I'll be using rovers a lot. However, I feel this will be the simplest way to go about creating that ginormous hole. Also, on the next live stream that I'm going to be doing, which will be this Friday, I want to create a large mobile roving base. I feel like that will be, yet again, a really cool idea and it will help me collect all of the ice that I need to power this ginormous base that I've got going on here. I do seem to be running through ice rather quickly. And I mean, this yet to be named rover, the unnamed rover, the rover that shall never have a name, can collect ice quite well. 
But I feel I could probably do a bit of a better job with something huge with lots of drills and lots of storage space. So that will be in the live stream and that will be the end of this episode. Thank you for watching. I hope you have enjoyed it. I have been Karnasa and I will see you later.